Shithouse, a footballer prone to repeated episodes of extreme on-field violence, simulation, or just general sneaky bastardness. So yes, today we're looking at 10 modern day shithouses in the Premier League who bring real character to our TVs and Twitter. We need more character in modern day football. Obviously these days it's a little bit harder with VAR and you can't really get away with a lot, but we just need more characters like this. People who just piss people off for the fun of it. Anyway, I'm digging straight into this list with Jesse Lingard coming in at number 10. Now with Jesse Lingard, I don't feel like he means to be a shithouse. I feel like his basic character just pisses people off. Once called a dog shagger by AFTV, this man just didn't care and it really Really got to people. Millie rocking at the Emirates, returning a few months later and moonwalking in front of the same bloody end of the Emirates, posting this on Instagram and labelling the Emirates as the dance floor. You got players Millie rocking, fucking moonwalking. It's embarrassing. Not to be a knob or anything, but he did have quite a punchable face as well. Do not even. No, 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 no. Being no surprise to you that he's made this list, Diego Costa is coming in at number nine. Just for dirtiness overall, this man was a brute, mate. I actually remember a moment with Ryan Shawcross, I think it was, where he just like said he stunk or something like that. It was something pathetic like that. I remember as well, uh, Man City Chelsea, like 2016. There was like a fight on the pitch and Diego Costa was on the bench and he literally runs over for the shit. He loves drama. Diego Costa, number nine. Coming in at number eight, and a very recent one, Emelino Martinez. This famous pitcher from the World Cup pretty much says it all. Imagine this, you're killing Mbappe, you've scored a hat-trick in the World Cup final, and failed to win the World Cup. Two days later, he has your face cut out onto a baby. And he's waving that baby. <laughs> Mate, oh my god, just, oh. Not to mention as well, yeah, he's literally, like, got the rules in football change now for penalties. Um, I don't know what the latest update of it is, but apparently goalkeepers are, like, are no longer allowed to kind of mock the player who's taken the penalty. So, yeah, he's li he, he quite literally changing the rules of football because it because he's so good at getting under people's skin. There was a whole thing as well where Bruno Fernandes got that penalty against him and he just, like, mocks the whole of the strap for them. The balls on that man is ridiculous mate like they're, they're huge the only reason he's not higher on this list is because most of his antics have been like outside of the premier league and this is a premier league based list coming in at number seven we have Deli ali celebrating in front of rival away ends sticking his middle finger up and like getting fines from like the fa in the premier league in a Carabao cup game against arsenal the arsenal fans were basically like throwing coins and plastic bottles at him and he just turns around and just goes like Kind of like, you know, we're winning 2-0. Overall, really, he was just known for pissing off rival fans. There was also another moment where he did a Fortnite dance at Wembley against United. We all know how that ended very quickly. Number six now, a more of a more brutal, violent player. I'm looking at Joey Barton. Now, when I hear the name Joey Barton, I just think of QPR versus Man City. I think of him just kicking out Aguero for no reason, getting sent off, and then City go on to finish off the script but yeah like i feel like this man was just he had a screw loose like he was just a nut job from flying into the ridiculous challenges he was never going to win to saying people are big noses and tiny knobs joey barton ladies and gentlemen enough said really watch this video and then we're going to move on to number five Right, we're getting into some serious, serious shithouse right now. Mario Balotelli had severe anger issues, had humour, was actually a good player on his day as well. I don't even know where to start with this player. There's literally a video, 50 crazy things Mario Balotelli has done funny. There's a list. Just some of the stuff he's done during his career. He set fireworks off in his room for a laugh, was forced to apologise a few days after, and um, was part of some like fireworks safety advertisement, which was just hilarious. Tried this brilliant shot in a friendly match and got took off a minute after. Because he was bored, he started to throw some darts at the youth players. Scored at Old Trafford and revealed a why always me top underneath. Honestly, the list goes on with Mario Balotelli. Number four, imagine this. You're involved in one of the most dodgiest transfers of all time. You later moved to Man United playing very well, winning a lot of trophies. You have a massive bust up and fallout of Sir Alex Ferguson. Join Man City 20 minutes down the road. You score against Man United, your old team. Mock the entire club, hold up this exact sign after helping their rivals win their first ever Premier League. A little later down the line, you refuse to come on in the Champions League game. You just say no. Fall out on Mancini. Go play golf or do whatever you're doing for like the next six, seven months. Then join back to Man City. Ladies and gentlemen, Carlos Tevez. When he returned to Man City after playing golf for six months, he did this celebration after scoring. At one point, he had both fans throwing their Tevez shirts in the bin. I feel like for this like storyline alone, 
this gets him high up in this list. Number three, Jamie Vardy. Let me just think, top of my head, that corner flag, my Crystal Palace celebration, mocking the logo, the Wolf celebration, mocking the Bristol away end. If you type in Jamie Vardy on YouTube, the first search you get is Jamie Vardy shithousing. According to former Leicester fullback Richie Delay, who revealed that Vardy asked teammates every match for slander in the language of the defender. That's the level of commitment we expect from a grandee like Vardy. If you look up the face, wind up merchant in the Oxford shit house dictionary all you'll find is a picture of Jamie Vardy cupping his ears directly in front of the opposing fans immediately after scoring a goal it's like all the caffeine this man intakes on a pre-game basis just stays with him for the whole 90 minutes and he's just buzzing off his tits mate coming in at number two we're gonna go for Suarez there's a video on YouTube called Louis Suarez bites players compilation diving fighting overall a very dirty player I think he's the most disliked player in all of football if I'm being brutally honest obviously there's that famous handball where he like handballed it off the line uh, they went on to miss the penalty and then you could see him in a tunnel like celebrating uh, when David Moyes called him a diver and he scored against Everton ran over to the bench and dived in front of David Moyes what made this player such a shit house was his talent he was so good one of the greatest strikers of all time he tried accusing the keeper of handball as well that was that was brilliant look I could go on with Luis Suarez coming in at number one and I want to put this tweet up on the screen actually in an era where footballers are becoming bland and robotic we need more shit houses like Mope. In a game against Arsenal Mope really injured Leno. When Leno was getting stretched off you could see the two exchanging some words and Elena Martinez comes on and there is an argument that like if it wasn't for Mope injuring Leno Martinez wouldn't have came on and had an opportunity meaning that he wouldn't have started for Argentina in the World Cup it's a massive butterfly effect anyway sorry so Martinez comes on during this game um, and Mope scores the winning goal and mate Arsenal around AFTV mate was sh oh my god AFTV that's another thing as well I know Ty is still crying to this day Mope you are an absolute disgrace you're a cheat I hope Brighton get relegated he also had another clash with Martinez where he just ran into him and then a few minutes later Martinez like taps him on his shoulder and he just refuses to get off the floor for like the next five minutes in a more recent moment he scored against Spurs and copied James Madison's dart celebration rattled James Madison to the complete top ended up having like a little kind of getting really funny with him yeah, and then he was on social media just like giving it beans like, oh yeah I've, I've shook the whole team <laughs> it was brilliant I feel like this man just wanted to become a professional player in the Premier League to just wind people up and I'm here for I, I'm really here for it I love it Mo oh, Pai is a cheat this is, this is, don't, Mo don't Pai see. is a so cheat now you're gonna... Neil Mo Pai's at number one for a good reason that's because he's doing all of this now in a time of VAR where you can't really get away with a lot in a time where you have so many pundits and so many ex players getting on your back in a time of social media and hundreds of people talking about you he is bringing the entertainment to football Twitter I can't really think of anyone else who's doing that and you've got to write it. You, you've got to respect it he just doesn't give a shit this clip just sums it all up but some of the Arsenal players uh, need to learn uh, humility maybe sometimes They've been talking a lot, first half, second half when they were uh, winding up, and uh, they got what they deserved. Neil Mopé, the king of winding people up. Thanks for watching anyway, and I'll, uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Let me know if I've missed anyone out.